Hi, welcome to a live stream from uh, Never Stop Trucking and uh, EA Trucking with uh, Emro and uh, our guest today, Alex. Uh, he is a professional driver recruiter and he's here to teach us all uh, some techniques as far as uh, the driver and the owner operator recruitment goes. Uh, he's been in indus this industry and in sales industry uh, for a long time, and I'll let him introduce himself um, as well. But I just want to um, tell you guys uh, a few things first. So the way we thought this would uh, take place is that uh, uh, this would be uh, kind of like a conversation uh, slash interview. Uh, and uh, you guys can take part too as well. You can uh, ask questions uh, about uh, driver recruitment, cold calling, things like that, because this live stream uh, will be about that strictly for the most part. So if you have any questions, how to attract drivers, how to talk to them, how to recruit new owner operators, you're welcome to uh, leave those questions in the chat section and we'll try to answer as many as we can uh, but we'll first uh, concentrate concentrate on our program here so uh, i want one more time to welcome emro from uh, ea trucking youtube channel make sure you subscribe to his channel as well he has uh, he's got some uh, really good content as far as dispatching and trucking goes it's still a, a new channel but he is growing slowly and uh uh, the person of the day today, Alex. Uh, hi, Alex. How are you? I'm fine. Thanks for the introduction. You're welcome. Uh, so do you uh, want to start uh, talking about uh, techniques uh, first or how, how do you, because I, I will leave the mic to you. I understand. Basically, I would first introduce myself. I'm Alex and at the moment I'm working as a head of recruitment for three of the biggest trucking companies in Dallas, Texas. Besides that, I'm mentoring few more companies and mentoring few sales people, sales guys. You might ask how I started. I'm basically my whole adult life in some kind of sales, B2B, B2C, enterprise, and I stumbled on cold calling four years ago when something happened in my life and I needed to stay uh, at home uh, full time. I started working as in a web development company and believe me, it was horrible. I went to some kind of cold calling course and provided by that company and started calling immediately after that. And for the first two months I made from six up to 7,000 calls and I had only 15 people who were willing to give me a minute of their time. And out of those 15 people, all of them hung up on me after almost 20 seconds. It was horrible, basically horrible state for me because I went from a provider to my family and I went to someone who doesn't bring anything to them. And, but th there is a big but. I knew that there is a way and I know that a lot of guys are super successful in cold calling and I asked them basically what to do. Should I quit or continue being miserable? One of them gave me an email address and told me to write to this guy. He told me to write 15 days straight about why I want to master this job. I think that was the mo basically the worst month and a half of my life. During the day, I helped my neighbors and they paid me for that. And during the night, I was making an email to this guy. I wanted to quit basically mul multiple times, but I knew that what kind of example I'm giving to my sons. And that sentence kept me awake during all of those nights. And on the 50th date, 
day I got a reply from this guy with only a phone number. I called that number and basically the strong masculine voice answered and he told me that basically he told me who he is and what he's doing for a living and if i want to mentor me he told me to pay him x amount of dollars basically for two months mentorship back then i sold my car i sold my motorbike and all the rest is history now i'm here guy from guy without any income to have the recruitment of those three biggest trucking companies from dallas texas and i'm entering for few more companies and few individuals basically that's that's my way how i done that so you're now working as a as a a driver recruiter and as a mentor you're mentoring other yeah uh, yeah recruiters. i'm leading teams in those three companies and besides that i'm mentoring few more companies and few individuals all of that in trucking industry okay so do you have any um highlights and anything that's uh that you know that you want to start with uh any very important things uh something like like fundamental things that uh people should be uh doing when engaging in uh such conversations uh, namely cold calling owner operators and drivers what are some fundamental things that uh, you think they should know uh basically Anis, a lot of people thinks it's easy to do cold calling it is when you know what you're doing but if you don't know how to position yourself it's not that easy and you're gonna be hung up all the time i mean that uh basically i can teach you how to get a phone and call random people i don't say that i i don't get hung up with my clients because that would be a lie and i would be a hypocrite I call some of them, they hung up on me, and that's completely normal thing. First thing I want for you is to be basically pre prepared. You're going to face a lot of challenges with getting those people on the phone, especially if you're calling headquarter numbers, office, office numbers. OK. Yeah. That's that's Emma, good. Emma, yeah, do you yeah, have any questions? Yes, his story was incredible. I actually did not know any anything of those. Now but, you know. That's that's incredible story. I'm glad for you that you, that you have made it. And uh, basically, just answered my first question that I had for you is like, what was your uh, journey to to where you are right now? But you already have answered that. Uh, the second question I had would be like, what kind of obstacles uh, will people who want to do what you're doing, uh, we're gonna is gonna have to overcome at the beginning? Like, what obstacles you had? Why that many people? You, you had like seven thousand calls, fifteen answers that eventually hang up on you after 10, 20 seconds. And why do you think that that happened? Because of my positioning on the call basically uh everything is in that decided in that first two or three seconds in a call 99 percent of your success is there basically you need to position yourself you need to give them a value to stay on the, that call and you have them it's easy when we are talking about this and I, when I'm saying this, but it's really hard to implement it. I needed almost two months to start implementing all of those things. Mm -hmm. But would you would you say it's actually simple, but not easy to do that? Yeah, it's simple, but it's it's not easy. Your attitude and way that you handle things are really crucial what do i mean by that 
this is a job where you are helping people. Basically, if you see that job like this, you can succeed. If not, you will be unsuccessful. Okay. And is do do you have any questions? Yeah, yeah, I do. And I want to uh, encourage everyone. If you, this is the time to ask uh, Alex any questions that you might have about uh, cold calling and recruiting in general, how to talk to drivers, how to make them uh, want to work with you. What can you offer them? What can you tell them in order to, to make your offer more uh, attractive? So this is, uh, I think, because I have never seen anyone do this uh, on YouTube, especially live like this, to have a guest that's doing that uh, professionally. So this is, a, uh, uh, you could say, a once in a lifetime opportunity because uh, most uh, dispatchers are struggling uh, with finding new owner operators right now. And uh, I also want to mention that uh, even if you have a trucking company and you need uh, company drivers for your uh, trucks or owner operators or owner operators for, for your uh, trucking authority, it doesn't matter. So uh, we can talk about all, tho all those and Alex has experience, a lot of experience in any uh, of those aspects, no matter if it's a dispatching company or trucking authority or company drivers, owner operators, doesn't matter. And everyone is struggling right now, especially trucking companies to find uh, new uh, drivers, how to um, make their offers more attractive, things, thing like, things like that. So if you have any questions like that, please do ask them. But speaking about that, Alex, how do you, uh, let's, let's talk, because we haven't talked about the company drivers. What what do you think, uh, like trucking authorities, how can they attract uh, new uh, company drivers? What can they tell them uh, to in order to, to make them switch over? Uh, basically, uh, all the companies have different way of dealing with company drivers. And they need to have offers, basically pros and cons for that company. What are they better at than other companies? And what are they less than other companies? Uh, in that case, they will need to make a script for cold callers so they can basically get them. It's easy when I'm saying like that because uh, all of you are getting thousand, basically, how many calls, Ennis, do you get on a daily basis from cold callers? Uh, well, m mostly uh, what the, the trend has been lately is that we are getting these uh, phone calls from <laughs> dispatching companies. And I get uh, mo most of them, uh, most of these phone calls are from the dispatching companies. So that'd be like at least five to ten a day, each day. You are good. I know guys that are getting from 80 to 150 calls a day from a cold callers. And well, well, I'm I get other phone calls like insurance, you know, things like that. Uh, but but dispatching companies, then that, that's like five to ten. Uh, basically, the biggest problem here is that uh, there is a pattern of how. 99% of salespeople sound like. Uh, that pattern sounds like, hi, Mr. Alex, how are you doing today, cheerfully? When you hear something like that, you know that guy is a salesperson, right? Yep. And what yeah. you will do next? Hang up on him, right? Yes, yeah. Yep. Uh, basically, I'm teaching those guys I'm working with how to use phone. It's that easy. Uh, you need don't need to forget this. Phone is the most lethal weapon in sales, and there are a couple of different reasons why. You can get to your potential customer fast, and you can control the whole process from the moment client that client says yes until the moment you hang up or client hangs up. 
The only thing you cannot control over the phone is how many clients is going to answer your call. And there is a simple solution for that. That solution is you need to be accountable to keep yourself accountable. How many calls a day I need to dial on a, in order to talk to X amount of people, in order to send X offers or to book X meetings, etc. The first thing here is that uh, I need to be aware is how many people I need to call a day to get a couple of different people to speak. And from that moment, you're going to know. I spoke with five different people and out of those five, I have two forward progress or next steps as I'm calling them. Other two wants to read an email and uh one one to book a meeting now so you know let's recap in order to get to x amount of meetings you need to make x amount of calls is everything clear here yep yeah yeah uh really important thing here is that on a cold calling we're not trying to sell any product or service on a first call this is one of the most important things in cold calling do you know why no really no tell us those guys you're calling don't know you don't trust you basically that's a trust issue if somebody calls you and asks you to do something for them straight of the gate and give them something would you do that without knowing anything about them. Yeah, you have to um, get to know the person first. And because of the trust, you never sell any kind of product or service on a cold call. Basically, there are thousands of cold calling companies in India, Uzbekistan, I don't know where else. And they're calling when they get that minute of attention they're trying to sell something they're on commission and if they sell something basically they, they get x amount of money and they are doing that wrong they don't have any kind of success measurable success they find basically some of the guys and dealing with them i don't know how and uh, but there is there is not good way to sell on a first call when you're calling uh b2c business to customer basically it's different than when you're calling b2b business when you're calling businesses because when you're calling b2c customers People buy with emotion and then justify by logic. Let me give you one example. For, for example, insurance. When you're selling insurance, uh, you're going to provoke an emotion. You will tell him, what if, God forbid, something happened with you? What's going to happen with your family? He's going to think with his emotions and he's going to decide to buy insurance. When you are doing B2B, when you're calling businesses, those people are not buying with their emotions. They are business owners and they will do some irrational things if that service or product will do something for their business in that precise moment. They will switch their emotions and buy with logic and make irrational decisions. For example, I had customer that uh, paid three times higher price for only 10% better performing product. But that customer wanted the best performance on the market and completely ignored the price. Do you see the point? Yeah. Yes. Basically, uh, all of the guys who want to start cold calling people must understand every single call cold call is a disturbance 
imagine that you are working and you pick up the phone and you hear cheerfully hi mr alex how are you doing today that's the pattern and that's the pattern we need to break you're not gonna sound like a salesperson we will not sound like that no mr no mrs no sir no nothing of that basically uh that's something that your all of the guys need to understand this first you need to get their attention that's really important you're gonna say hi your name basically that client's name it's your name from from company that sound like hi hi anis it's alex from xyz company got a minute and you are not saying anything until he speaks after that you need to give him a reason to stay on a call it's really important so if you want you can write this down clients don't give a shit about your service product or company or you that's really important they don't care about any of that unless you show them how your product your service your company or you directly is gonna help them solve that burning problem of theirs you need to specify the reason why you're calling them but the most important thing here is to listen on average sales call salesperson is talking around 75 percent and that prospect is only talking around 25 percent that means you need to talk less and basically hear more i know uh, i don't know have you heard this but everybody wants to buy but nobody wants to be sold have you heard this any samro yeah i've heard that before basically pushy sales techniques used during the 90s are outdated nowadays the first thing you are fighting against is skepticism do you know how to beat that skepticism uh not really i i have no experience in cold calling whatsoever understand and i will tell you how the only antidote against skepticism is value and honesty you can okay. only beat that skepticism with value straight of the gate and honesty with your client and basically all the guys who want to be cold callers or want to get customers with cold calling must know we're disturbing people every cold call is a disturbance pay attention about your pro potential prospect not to waste their time not to chit chat with them not to bullshit them you need to be honest direct and concise straight on a gate be a human being like your prospect and let's speak the language they understand uh basically if you go with cheerful hello alex how are you doing today i have service that's gonna help you make more money and save your time who's gonna trust these words in 2023 nobody nobody uh if you do everything properly even they know this is a sales call they will give you a minute the other thing here is what you're gonna do with that one minute what you're gonna say do you have any ideas uh i don't really know i, I would say hey do you want to buy my product <laughs> and he would hang up on me yeah <laughs> if you start pitching your company and the product it's not gonna be good because let's back for a second clients don't care don't give a shit about your product company the only thing they care about is how your service or product can solve their burning problem at the moment so you need to be prepared for each and any call preparation is 
key to cold calling. Uh, basically, when I got uh in one of the biggest trucking companies from dallas texas their outreach approach uh, before i came was uh sending an emails facebook ads craigslist referral bonuses and those strategies are good i'm not saying they're bad but buying or prospecting cycle is much longer why you might ask as i mentioned in the beginning they cannot control the process you can you control if the email is gonna go to inbox or spam yeah you cannot can you control if that client is gonna open it or not no can you control if that client gonna read it no after that can you control if that client even replies on that email no nobody can do that too many variables that you can't control. You cannot do sales if you cannot control the process. On the phone, there is a single thing you cannot control, and that's how many clients are going to pick up their phone that day. This is why we're doing split testing, keeping yourself accountable, and we're dialing on a daily basis X amount of calls. For example, uh, if I do hundred numbers a day i can speak with 10 people out of those 10 i can have next step with at least some type of forward progress with five of them i book one meeting and i do the follow-up with those four left this is only this part is a numbers game everything else is by you knowing how to approach your clients and how to do sales right Yep. yep. Uh, and it should be told, guys, what happened yesterday. I was I was going to ask you a question related to that. Uh, so um, how do you like because I've heard this. I've heard this before that you don't uh, sell your product on, on the first call. And I. Uh, it does make sense and uh, when we had that session the other day another uh, professional uh, recruiter um, he approved of that uh, tactique but how do you like when you call someone and you tell them um, you know this is uh and is from uh, 3b logistics and uh, this is what we are doing and they are all interested and you call them the second time and they don't answer what what does that mean does that mean that they just told you that they're interested just to brush you off did they change their mind how do you get them to answer that second call uh that's basically they're getting 100 up to 200 calls a day uh the mistake yesterday was we didn't send an email to them in basically in regarding to that call we will change that and you will see what we basically what will happen today okay yeah because that's i was i wanted to ask you that because uh i thought it i wanted to give you a hard question like that <laughs> i understand <laughs> okay uh as i told you the crucial thing for the cold calling or for everything in life is preparation okay and and learning like you said a b testing and then learning and improving your ways as you go yeah basically uh yesterday you got uh one guy with 20 trucks and two guys with two or three trucks right to this yeah them. something i i know for sure there was one with 20 trucks yeah yeah that's only with one day of cold calling basically three hours of cold calling and that kind of result would that be something that can change your business or not yeah that's, that's very question. very promising very promising results yes uh basically what do i mean by crucial thing for cold calling is a preparation before you start before you take the phone and start dialing we need to be prepared this is the company i'm calling at the moment why i'm calling them this is really important 
because this company is similar to many other companies we collaborate with those company or that precise industry they have a couple of crucial blockers or challenges or red flags or problems or pain points that my company can solve for them and that my company has solved for similar companies in the past you need to know how to present that to that client if you do this properly basically you sold your dispatching you got that owner operator to run for you or you got your that company driver and what's the two biggest problems that companies are facing right now in your industry and so drivers and uh, rates that's what we found out the other day and uh, you know with rates we can't change uh we can't change the rates as as dispatchers we can try to find the best rates out there uh, i think with over promising and not being honest that that's you know it has a um it it's it's gonna it's gonna be counterproductive to to promise someone something can't fulfill and they start working that's that's not gonna work uh and but people do that uh, so we can't change the rates um but we can uh, try to find drivers and, and you you know and uh, uh, people are not understanding this uh either uh it's not just about finding drivers it's about keeping them too you know how do you keep them i mean someone you could argue that well you know if you give them good raise they will stay uh, that but you know there are other things they uh So those are the two two things uh, rates and and driver shortage i understand uh that rates do you think that you can do better job with getting your clients loads than somebody who is dealing with basically only for two months from i don't know where from india that doesn't speak english properly can you do a better job than him uh well i can do that i mean it it has to do with the fact that you know that emra and i we we do have a lot of experience uh, i i have also have driving experience so that's that's my sales pitch and that's where i think that i can do a, a better job than others i everyone has something that that they can do uh, better than others and in my opinion that's that should be their sales pitch you should emphasize uh, that yeah. thing after yeah you, i agree after you give them a value to stay on a call and arrange that second meeting you need to tell them that where are you your beginnings what are you doing right now what you're doing for them straight of the gate be honest be concise and if that's something that they're looking for they will work with you so so give them your strengths um like but give them give them more weaknesses too but then give be them. honest and 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 be honest about that tell them tell them you can get a guy from india he will uh charge you less percentage but do you think that me or and him can give you the exactly the same service well as like i said like i said uh i i put out my experience and my driving experience but then the guy from india what can work because we are we are helping everyone like no matter where you live I understand and a guy from india can say well i'm gonna charge you less that's that's my selling point you know and i guess it has a different effect on 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 each driver each owner operator wh whatever is most important to them you know what i mean would you send your driver on a slip slippery road when you know that's snowing and 
basically uh, with a really heavy load. Yeah, that's what where my experience as a dispatcher comes in, and also experience as a driver. And that's the difference. Difference yeah, there's from a... wrecked truck uh, and better there's load. There's too many dispatchers. They're gonna charge you two or three percent, but they're gonna force you. They're gonna keep yeah. calling you, offer you every single load they see until you take something because he's got nothing from you until uh, he takes something. Obviously. Basically, he's gonna force you. He's gonna uh, all of that. Uh, when you provide these special services, it's not about rates, basically. It's about service. Same rate can get anyone, but uh, ways to get to that uh, can differ greatly between uh, dispatchers, dispatching companies, and all of that. And in some time, they will lose that customer, right? For sure. That's that's something if you are building strong company with good fundamental uh basically that's something that's gonna last if you're building your company on bullshit that's not gonna last yep okay yeah so like i said before we we want uh everyone to be able to dispatch from home that's what we are teaching here no matter where you are um uh, me and Nembro and you we do have an a accent and uh our english is not perfect so yes. in my opinion we have to and anyone that has an accent whether you live here or in another country uh if it's balkans area because we have a lot of viewers from balkans uh and and from uh pakistan india you know we all have an accent and we i think we have to work extra hard uh to make people trust us but i think if you just give us one day to dispatch you then you will see it, it, that uh, and america is is a great country as far as that goes you know no one really cares about that that much uh as long as you're honest and providing a good service and giving them uh, a value so that's that's my um uh, hey um alex uh we, we do have uh some questions there and i didn't and... want to break your flow here i also have some questions uh i want to ask you these questions i need i need first to say something uh, yeah go ahead you, you told me that guys with accent uh it's a little more difficult for them to do a cold calling it's not it's uh basically when you give a value to your prospect there is no way he won't catch that opportunity because of your accent well it's it's not i i'm not i'm not saying it's a, a racist thing it's more like uh uh some people have trouble understanding others uh, i know myself you know english is not my first language and sometimes when i hear someone from a different country it's hard to understand and that might be a, a barrier for someone because they can't understand a certain accent you know i started learning spanish because of a lot of spanish drivers so i want to utilize that kind of market so i'm uh, basically learning sp spanish right now <laughs> there you go <laughs> that's nice <laughs> okay so uh when, when you were uh saying uh when, when you were talking about opening up the phone call i i have a few questions about that okay sure. so first question and we don't have to go into details uh just like uh uh if you can answer these so when you when you ask someone got a minute when they say yes or i have two minutes or i have five minutes uh, i have 20 seconds then you you have that much time to give them your pitch but what what when they say no like got a minute they say no i don't what what how do you keep them on 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 or, or do you ask them to call them back later at a different time how do you deal with that i can call you in um in half an hour is that okay with you it's no no can you call me uh tomorrow not a problem what time about noon around noon okay i will text you before that call and i'm calling you tomorrow noon okay 
Okay. All right. Good. Thank you. <laughs> Let me ask you another. Uh, so how do you keep them after uh, they say they do have a minute or two or you call them to uh, the next day? How do you uh, keep them to stay on, on that phone call until you finalize your sale? How, do you have to speak fast? Do you have to be on point the whole time? Do you have to uh, kind of analyze their um, personality and and try to find out what they like to talk about what's you know what's their pain point how do you make them stay you need first you need to listen listen what they have uh, other you need to be concise give them a value show them what you done for companies like theirs in the past and leave them to make a decision okay it's, it's it's that easy no matter in what interest in industry you are is it uh trucking is it uh basically web development it's easy show them their problem their burning problem show them how you solve that problem for companies like there and ask them would you be interested to get another call to explain you that it's that easy but you need to be confident and sound confident as hell while you're doing that my mentor basically harassed me uh, for two months uh i wanted to basically with every single day of he mentoring me every single day i thought that this guy uh hates me that i don't know basically whatever you get on a phone after that mentoring it's easy it's really easy there is no things that prospect can tell you after mentoring like that and to bother you speaking about that how do you mentor your mentees how do you work with them what would be uh what would a typical day uh, look like and how how for how long like how many days do you usually need to to in in order to um to finish that training i have uh basically two options i have 21 day option and six months option for that 21 days option we're working our a day and i'm teaching a lot of uh how to say advanced things there i'm teaching uh, them about metaverbal communication i'm teaching them about smoke screens and how to deal with it uh, how to effectively use the inflections how to double close effectively you know that a lot of guys don't use effectively voicemail Th that's something that most of the cold callers don't know how to use uh, basically i'm besides that i'm teaching them how to use tactical empathy if somebody for example asks you when you call them is this a cold call why you're calling me you need to tell him yeah this is a cold call but there is a reason for this call and pause here you get his empathy but he don't know why you're calling and he don't want to hang up on you because there is maybe something for him there are a lot of that advanced things that we go through and for that 21 days working for an hour a day on uh basically on those in that hour we will analyze a lot of calls you they need to uh, record those calls and we're re listening them and we're seeing what they done okay and what they messed up 
So there was a, a question here that I like when we go uh, to question, there are not that many, maybe like five or six questions, but one of them uh, was asking, I think um, it could be connected to what you just said. Uh, for a new trainee or an, uh, someone that's or someone that's new to cold calling or dispatching, fi finding new owner operators, uh, what would be like a I, I know there's a, you can't come with a real number like a success rate, but like depending on how many calls you do a day, uh, what would be just roughly a success rate for that? Like conversion rate. Yeah, um, like 100 phones, 100 calls a day equals this many new prospects, you know. It depends from industry. Uh, to industry but if you are looking to get uh trust dispatch uh i think if you are experienced you can get basically from five to ten companies that you are gonna basically check and reevaluate with them would you be interested to work with them and what kind of requirements they ask what kind of requir requirements they have uh but i think that you can get easy five guys a week guy a week if you dial from 50 up to 150 numbers so that's when you're experienced and but when you start yeah. it, it's probably going to be lower it's much lower basically for that 21 days we're working on your mindset mindset is really crucial here if you go everything you think at the moment that person can hear from your voice if you are scared they will feel that you're scared if you if you're not sure what kind of service you sell they will hear that basically they will hear everything because of that you need for at least 21 days work on all of that and you will need to know that industry of yours in and out so so you could argue that uh when when they say practice practice because i I've, I've read uh that uh there is this book i have it right here uh mastery it's called Ma mastery and uh the author uh argues that if you do anything for four hours a day you will become a master at it what whatever you do so when they say practice makes perfect it's not just a cliche and when they say don't give up it's not just a saying it's not it doesn't mean like don't give up something will eventually pop up it means that while you're doing it every day you're practicing you're becoming better you're becoming an expert and then with time you will close more deals because you will become a uh, uh, better and you will become more self-confident yeah that confidence is a key here basically uh that confidence you will need to have uh be mentally prepared for learning you will do something re repeatedly and you need to basically see hear what those people what those people are are saying to you and in that case maybe change the script a little bit until it become perfect then use it properly and you're gonna have clients okay cool amro do you have any questions uh so basically when you're trying to get uh, like new carrier to work with you you are a dispatcher uh dispatch service company or something like that so when you call him so you basically don't want to uh pitch him and offer him any percentages or anything right away or like right off the gate you do not mention that you if just basically... he asks if he asks okay. you will give him but if not okay. so if not you you don't say that no i'm not saying that because in that case he know that 
So you're going to basically trying to get something from him. Here, he needs to basically feel that you want to help him as mm -hmm. you help those companies in the past. OK. And that actually has to be genuine uh, in order for him to actually feel that and in order to keep yeah. him working with yeah. you. So if he gets to work with you seven days and he's going to see you're not doing what you have promised, he's not going to be there anymore. I need to tell you something. A few years ago, I while back the, when was uh, when I was working for a web development company, uh, I had something like this on a call. I lied to a guy okay. on a phone, mm -hmm. and my inflection went up and he felt it and never answered my call again it was a close deal basically he needed only to pay us and that's all okay we finished and i lied one sentence he felt that and that's it you mentioned inflection what that does actually mean uh, you know, uh, in English, we have two inflections, upward and downward. When uh, I say, hi, Emro, how are you? Cheerfully, that's upward. Yep. And when you when you are talking like this and explaining something, you're going with downward inflection. OK, there is a way when where you can use one and where you can use other. OK. Thank you. I, do, I never know what that actually yeah. meant. So when you when you're lying, it tends to go up. It tends to go up. So, huh? Okay. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. It it tends to go up. That's that's something that uh, we re listened on that call, me and my mentor back then, and he told me that you're lying here. How you knew that? basically your voice told me and that's it i lost that customer because of it okay so you're teaching your attendees exactly how to spot not that to do and that to not... and not to do that yeah <laughs> okay that's good to know we are approaching an hour so i think we should uh, start answering these questions we don't have that many, so if you guys have more, keep them coming. But um, is that okay, Alex? Should we tr should we, should we yeah, start? We can. Okay. Uh, Kirk is asking. Uh, before I make a call, I role play with myself. Uh, is that a good thing to do, or should I let the conversation just go freely? Should I basically prepare for that conversation, or just you know? Yeah, that's a good go? question. You don't need to do a role play that's something that uh, need to be done previous day and that role play can need to be script based for all the customers the same you don't need to make other approach for other customers as i told you in this call give them a value to stay on a call that's that value that you're giving them is proportionate to that time they're giving to you on the call. If you do that properly, you will have them. If not, you will lose them. And you don't need to uh, exercise because uh, when you're calling, you don't know is he going to pick up or not, right? Yeah. No so one are, knows. So are you saying that uh, we should do that once before we officially start just to kind of prepare ourselves for future and just stick with that script don't don't do it all the don't time improvise. don't change it don't don't change it don't improvise don't do nothing like that if you find something that's working don't change it okay you're okay. gonna you're gonna mess that up for sure okay so uh next question uh uh user one two three one two three is asking um 
as far as uh, he understands or she, uh, the most effective method is to be honest and simple at uh, cold calling. Is that true? Yeah. Simple, honest, give them a value to stay on a call, respect their time as if you're looking for from them to respect your time when you're calling them respect theirs it's that easy okay it's that easy but most of the most of the guys who are doing cold calling are not doing that yeah i know definitely i was uh the uh, I, I just wanna um yeah i think this is a good uh chance to to say this i was uh making a phone uh, not a phone call a video the other day and i decided not to publish it maybe maybe sometime in the future i was getting all these text messages from uh dispatching companies advertising their services and uh i gathered like 10 of them and i put them on screen and i analyzed them and made a video like what you should do what you should not do things like that and I felt like uh, I, I maybe went over the edge or, on criticizing, and I don't I don't like to put out those kind of videos, like where I overly criticize some someone. I want to be positive. I can do that. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but what's uh, interesting, as I was as I was um, making that video, I received a phone call. Uh, and they were advertising it was a lady she was advertising dispatching services and that was just perfect timing and i got it on uh, on a video and she was really nice uh, she was not that bad you know again uh, she did have an accent sorry what do you mean by not that bad you wanted uh, to stay on a call with her or no she wasn't uh usually as we were saying before most of these uh dispatching companies when they call you they will open up uh with something as uh uh hi how are you no hi my name is uh, that that and such and such i'm with that company uh, how are you doing today sir and then we we spoke about that that you shouldn't be and i understand in these cultures especially in in these cultures they are taught to respect everyone and and that's their in in their language that's a thing you know sir ma'am madam you know they're overly kind uh, and here you have instances when you're supposed to do that but then like we said in cold calling uh you shouldn't be doing that and uh, and they're just used to it you know i, I they I, I know they can't help it and then when they say that and i'm like okay now here i'm rolling my eyes I'm good. How are you? And then I know what's coming. You know, like you said, I know what's coming. Can I talk to someone in charge of uh, uh, dispatching or uh, shipping department or, or, or uh, transportation decisions, things like that, these complicated words that you don't need to be using. And at that, at that point, I usually hang up because uh, I know what it is. And I, I and then I block the number. <laughs> and. Uh, but that, since I was making this video, I was like, well, I, I let I let the conversation go because this is a good uh, it's a good uh, a chance to to show what you should not be doing. But then she turned out to be OK. Uh, she asked me, like, what am I doing? You know how we are dispatching the trucks. And I told her that and I said, I really don't have that much time. I asked her, can you send me an email? And then she did right away. Uh, so I don't remember the specifics, like what exactly she said, but I felt that it was an okay. It wasn't a perfect way uh, to do a sales pitch, but it was an okay way. She did make some mistakes. I, I asked her, like, "Hey, where are you from? Like, where are you located? Where, where is your?" And then she said, "New York." I was like, "No, you're not in New York." And then she sent me an email. It was 3 p.m. in the afternoon, and she said, "Good morning." And then like you know, like I know you're not. Just tell me the truth. Tell me right away. I'm in a different country, and I'll I'll appreciate that. So so sorry for bragging, but I understand a lot of guys who are doing guys or girls who are doing cold calling. They're making the first and big mistake, 
and they're trying to talk with somebody in the company. That's not proper way to do it. You need to find a decision maker for that. If you're talking, if we are talking about trucking company, that's mostly owner of the company, and you're talking only with him, none of other guys. Why? If you talk with a gatekeeper, I mean secretary or assistant, he will blow you off after a few words with you or will tell you send and send us an email and we will see from there. They are telling that to basically hundreds of guys a day. But when you are talking with the guy who is in charge and show him what you need to do, basically what you've done for the companies like his, he might ask, is there anything for me? Can those guys do that for me? How that would improve my business? Okay. Okay. All right, let's go to next question. Uh, Emre, do you have anything to add? Uh, not really. Okay. You said it. Paul. yeah just uh interrupt us uh if you <laughs> have something I'll, I'll do it don't worry <laughs> okay uh next question um i wanted to ask this question i had this on my list uh suleiman is asking what is the best time to do cold calling you're not uh you mean in trucking right in trucking yes what is you... the I, I would say i would add what is the best day of, of 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 the month or of the week and best time of the day to call you are not calling guys on mondays early morning you're not doing that and you're not calling guys on fridays afternoon that's uh, in my experience that's the worst time to call you can even do some saturdays saturdays from i don't know from 1 pm up to 3 or 4 pm but never call them on monday mornings and friday afternoons what about uh, weekends and holidays uh if you want to basically talk with them on holidays that's not proper thing to go maybe you can text them uh wish him wish them the best and something like that but not calling them on those would days. you argue that uh during holidays people tend to be more i agree it's not okay you know but would you agree that uh, they are more uh, cheerful and happy and in better mood to maybe say yes to you or even talk to you or maybe even available because they are not working they, they are at home what do you think about that i will give you give to all of you some phenomenal stuff in here this is a proper value that's something that i'm doing with all of my uh mentees and maybe you sh should do that and improve your business first of all you need to text guys you're calling with the details some of the details about your company if they're not picking up after that you need to this may be the best thing you can do only wish them a happy holiday nothing more than that yeah that's that's great i like that and they're scrolling and seeing that message before and they're calling you on holidays they that, will call you that's that's the way basically for me the best day uh, was a thanksgiving day basically i wish them all happy holidays and they started calling me so those are the best calls, the, the best leads, because yeah. they are taking the yeah. initiative yeah. and calling you. It's perfect to work with them. And you're not going 
like they don't know you, you're then selling your service. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, let me go to next uh, question. Uh, what to say to owner operators which already have dispatchers or don't even want to talk to dispatchers? I think this is uh, maybe two questions. Uh, so if you if you can real quick uh, address uh, both of them. So one is one of them is like what to tell them if they already have a dispatcher or or someone that doesn't even want to uh, talk or you know uh, work with dispatchers. It's easy. Uh, ask them are they satisfied but do not ask them are you satisfied or not ask them on a scale one to ten how satisfied are you with the service what did they say ten ten or ten of ten wish you the best okay but, but if, they... if they say nine what do you need to go to a ten and you have them well then you need to ask them what can you do better than these other guys i mean like not in this sense but find out what's yeah what yeah, yeah other guys are not doing and then how you can improve that you basically tell you that you, they will they will in next minute of that call will tell you everything you need to know you only need to listen listen and take notes this is the most important thing you can do take notes notes of everything where where are he from uh where uh basically where they want to drive uh what's the name of his children everything because every information you have can help you in some way so it can it can uh you can it can touch their emotions if you remember some of their private things because i i know I'm amazed by people who can remember things like personal things about me and they like ask me hey you know what uh, what happened to this and I was like how do you even remember that stuff so, so that's that's a you know that that's what a that's, good salesman does that's important for mostly for your relationship with him me as a cold caller I will finish with him mostly when I basically provide you the service and you start working with him or i suggest something different to get in touch with those guys ask them how are they satisfied with the company that they are working with at the moment have a great relationship with them basically they will help you get more clients referral bonuses right and then the second part of the question, like, what if they don't even want to talk to a, a dispatcher or want, mm -hmm. don't want dispatching? Is there a way to make them? No, work there, or is, not there, just... there is no way. But if you call them in, next week or two weeks from then or three weeks from them, they might change everything. And they need that kind of service. Yeah, because something happened that... Uh, yeah. and, 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 Okay, or right. maybe, or maybe he is pissed on his wife, or somebody else, and he don't want to talk at that precise moment. Okay. All right. Next question: <clears throat> How to represent your services if you are a new dispatcher? So you're a beginner, you have no experience. How how to make them work with you? Tell them everything. Tell them everything what you will try to do for them and try to deliver so tell them i i am new tell but them, tell them i am new i want to do that can you give me a shot yeah i'll i will uh, uh keep uh, looking even after hours uh, on the weekend i will be available everything. 24 hours i will do yeah, everything we'll that's say. The, like give me seven days if you don't like it you don't have to pay for it yeah. but if you like it i you told pay you me. yeah give me a, only a seven days and you will see what i can do for you everybody will accept that yep. right yeah that's sure. that okay let me go let me see i think we have more uh and we we can uh because we we've, we've been over an hour we can just uh uh, try to do it sh um, short. Uh, 
I'm realizing that you have to, Antonio is saying, I'm realizing that you have to have a set in stone business offer and services because you want to sound consistent and confident. So like you, you have to have something consistent uh, an offer that you're giving out because it sounds more uh, professional, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's uh, a must because uh, your vo voice will, if you are telling them something that isn't true, your voice, voice will go up and you will lose that. Yeah, or something that you just came up with. Uh, and yeah, so, yeah. but if you keep keep offering the same thing over and over that you, you, your voice sounds more uh, confident. Confident, yeah. Okay. Uh, Arthur is asking, uh, what if there is no answer, meaning uh, voicemail? Uh, what if there is no answer and then I can leave a message? What should I say in that message? Okay, in that message you introduce yourself and basically tell them to call you nothing more than that why okay. you why you might ask if you tell him i am alex from xyz dispatching company i want to give you better loads i want to do everything like that no one will call you but if you tell them hi mary it's alex call me my number is nothing more than that there is much better chance they will call you Okay, because you're giving uh, signals like, uh, uh, what's the name? I can't uh, think of a name, but it's like uh, something that uh, uh, you're not telling what it is, but it, it yeah. will kind of make them want to know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, there's a word I can't remember. Um, okay, next one. Um, Kirk is saying sometimes being uh, I, this is not a, a question it's just a statement but I want to read it because it's good uh, sometimes being overly kind comes off as your your begging and the lesser your value uh, I guess ma making uh, your value uh, less smaller uh, that you're tra trying to give to the potential client I like to argue that you uh, make you sound inferior to them you shouldn't you shouldn't come out as that you should at, at least come out to be on the same level you know but not not like now you're not desperate you're not inferior right in in meta verbal communication we are basically uh teaching our mentees to do everything like they heard their uh prospect does what do i mean by that copy his voice his volume basically everything because people are really comfortable with guys who sounds like them understand so the you're end. imitating them and yeah okay. yeah yeah that's some advanced that we can do and where you're basically uh when you're asking him hello you can hear everything and you need to be sound as much as possible like him to basically get that first like from him to give you a little push to continue the calling okay that's very interesting okay um let me see uh kirk is a uh, boundless explorer like the video thank you uh, and then he's say, saying your videos are amazing. Thank you. We're trying to give you the best um, uh, options out there to, you know, succeed. Uh, and we are learning something, me and Emro <laughs> as well. So yes. it's a win-win situation. Kirk is asking what happens when the client uh, tries to take over the conversation by venting their problem. Uh, we can now see their problem, but they still don't call you back or respond uh real quick uh, i found this to be a like back then when i was uh, uh, uh putting out ads for company drivers and they would call me and and then they would start talking about everything and then i just didn't have uh i didn't want to interrupt them and tell them hey you know i gotta go 
then I listen to it and then nothing ever happens you know that I don't even hire the driver but that all I've been is listening to their problems <laughs> uh, so like uh, what what to do when a client tries to take over the conversation by venting their problem like they're venting out just tell them listen I don't want to waste your time not mine but yours I don't want to waste your time basically you're not telling him that he's wasting yours you're telling him that you don't want to waste his time and in that case he will cut that explanation and basically go straight if that's okay okay if not some of you will hung up okay all right uh next question alex uh if someone picks up and i say hi introduce myself ask if they have a minute and if they say yes should i say what is the call about or what should i say the next so when they say when you say you got a minute they say yes so what what do you do next as i told you uh, you need to give them a value to stay on this call what's that value basically show them tell them that you will show them on next call next meeting what you done for companies in their industry for companies similar like theirs how you doubled or even tripled sales how you got more drivers how you got more owner operators how you basically how you did something for companies like theirs and how you improve them okay uh and then i just want to say that uh, we'll take this one question because there is one more left but we are not gonna take any more uh questions uh so uh the last question from alex as well if i get no answer and i always leave a voicemail and text message uh, send send them a text message explaining why uh, i'm calling is that too much or not like uh, overwhelming the client to the point they might not even finish reading so is it too much to call them leave them a voicemail and, and text them after one or two days that client doesn't remember you called they don't remember you they don't recognize that number so you can call them tomorrow you can do a voicemail today after that you are calling him tomorrow again send him a text okay uh i'll i'll take one more uh, uh it's a pretty good question right it, it's it's a it's a good question and i really didn't think about that because you're right uh when with so many phone calls um it's uh hard to remember like whoever called you or if they sent you a message or not but it's just like now it's the uh the point is to stick out it's not to to call someone and it's it's to stick out from the from the crowd to be uh different and that's direct, how we you can get their attention size solve them solve them problem say, say one more time i didn't hear that you need to be direct concise and solve them their burning problem that's all so that's how you're gonna stick out yeah okay if, uh, if, and it's, if someone calls you and basically show you how he basically got more uh owner operators for dispatching for other companies would you be interested to basically talk with him again right of course yeah that's so easy but you need to sound as confident as hell and you need to know what you're doing okay uh i just want i think i'm looking here i think uh uh Jivan Koich, he he had a question i think he bought one uh, uh yeah he bought our course yesterday when we had that promotion so i really yeah, want to great. answer this question for him uh he's asking uh what about not having your mc number and you want to work with their MC number, how to deal with this particular situation and what are the chances they will accept it knowing you're not a company? So 
I think this would be a question for us that uh, ba basically you, you don't need uh, an MC number as a dispatcher and you can't even have one unless you have your own trucks. So, and you, uh, I keep um, getting these questions and, and I, I always answer them and I will, uh, unless you live in the United States, uh, you can't uh, have a parking authority in your name. Uh, you, you might be able to do it in another way, but that's that's a different story. And okay. you know how much of that is yeah. legal, I don't know. Yeah, but uh, uh, you cannot have a trucking company uh, an MC number if you don't live in the United States, and if you don't have a truck on your insurance it doesn't have to be your truck it can be an owner operator it's leased on to you uh, but you have to have a truck on insurance because fmcsa will uh, check that uh, constantly and the minute you you don't have any trucks anymore in insurance they will uh, suspend your authority so as a dispatcher uh, you don't have an mc number you can't have it and you don't need it uh, all you have to do uh, you can even work in your own name as a sole proprietor, but it's best to have a company, best to have an LLC. Um, and in in your state, it's very easy to open. Even if you're abroad, uh, there are companies in the United States that will do it for you. They will open up an LLC. Uh, so you, what do you tell them? You just tell them that you're a dispatching company. You're working with other MC uh, authorities out there and all you're doing is providing dispatching services to them you're booking the loads in their name in their mc number they're still charging the broker they're sending them invoices they're still using their insurance so you're like just like a middle person you're in never in possession of the freight you're not a freight broker you're not a uh, 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 trucking authority uh, all you do is just uh, uh, look for these loads book them in their name in their MC number's name and just forward it to them and you will charge yeah. that owner operator a fee for that service. That's all. Do you guys have anything to add to that? Uh, there's just one a great question from Alex. Uh, I know you said that you're not answering more questions, but how do I learn more from you about cold calls? That's basically i i think that anis and emro will explain you everything because i okay, need yeah. to go i need to go i'm so sorry they will explain you better yeah okay? i will explain that to you and then the database of suleiman is the fmcsa uh, we'll we'll leave that uh in description of this uh, video uh, okay. uh and i have a lot of videos about calling owner operators and then the uh, database is right there uh, there are few few databases in those videos. Just look on my channel for uh, call, uh, owner operators, how to get the owner operators videos, and and those da databases are there. I uh, understand. Sorry, guys, for interrupting you. I need to go. Okay. Uh, if you need anything, call me. Okay. All right. Thanks, Thanks. for being Thanks. here. Thanks this is for very everything. Helpful. Thank you Thanks very much. for great questions, guys. Wish you the best. All right. Thank you. Yeah, he's very busy with uh, um, his uh, company and his calling. I well, this is a perfect because uh, Alex asked that question, and uh, so Alex was uh, very kind to partner up with us, and uh, he's providing uh, the mentorship program coaching, and uh, there is a link in description of this video. I use that code to get 60% off uh, for five people that sign up first uh, for this program. Uh, so five people can get 60% off. The link is in description um, if you want to work with uh, Alex. Um, that's totally up to you. Uh, but I think this video itself was very informal, but I, I still think like, if you have someone that uh, watches over you and pushes you that you will uh, do a better job on on uh, cold calling and getting owner operators emro how did yeah, you feel I agree about with that. That? yeah uh, anybody can talk to me and explain me everything about cold calling what this means what that means and how to do that 
but tomorrow I'm gonna forget all of, all of that unless I have somebody who's gonna push me, uh, get me on the right path every single day, an hour a day uh, working with you. That's that's basically it. Uh, I mean, I, we can listen to him uh, answering questions uh, day in day out, but that is not gonna help us a lot unless you have somebody who's gonna push you, uh, get you on the right path. Uh, he's got really good uh, percentage rate of conversion rate, basically, and he knows what he's doing. Yeah, he just, uh, as we were saying, he just started uh, working with us yesterday on on uh, on that, and he already had uh, a couple of uh, good prospects. So, so that's yeah. that's really good. Uh, these videos uh, on YouTube are very helpful and uh, on on never stop trucking channel and on your channel ea uh trucking we we uh, try to get out as much information as we can and i know that there are a lot of uh, people and i i'm getting emails emro every day and and messages that uh, uh, they learned how to dispatch from from this channel and i'm sure they watched other channels as well but th what they were doing is they were taking notes you can't just watch a video and and because tomorrow you'll forget everything about it you know even even yeah. so if you watch 10 videos it's it's even worse it's like too much information but once you start er uh, writing everything down and and putting that into practice that's different but then also mm -hmm. there's an organized way of teaching as well and uh some people because like watching these videos it will take you a while it can take you months but in organized way you can learn much faster and i'm not just talking about that i'm talking about everything um everything out there in life i'm i'm a member of one group where we we are learning something and i tried to do it myself many times before and uh i failed but now i am i'm we we have a teacher and we have a small group of five people and it's different and and they're not uh like i know a lot of those things already but uh, the teacher pushes us and you feel bad like if you come at the end of the week and you didn't do your work because that makes you do uh, do your work makes you be better and then you can share experience with the uh, the other group their struggles and 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 things like that so i i, I think it's uh that's the best way to to uh teach yeah, it's a, it's the fastest way. Basically, you, so he's gonna share his experience with you, and he's gonna uh, get you to the point that took him years and years to get to. And you're gonna take a shortcut to to that point just by having somebody besides you who has experience, and he's gonna push you to do something right. Yeah, I was uh, the other day on a website, and this guy was teaching something else not related to trucking. And he said, uh, I'm gonna put into practice, I'm gonna teach you what I learned in uh, during 30,000 hours of, of working. So that's a lot, like 30,000 hours of, of wow. uh, uh, having that experience, I will be teaching you. So that, that's, that's a big value right there. Yeah, it is, for sure. Okay, and then for the end, I just want to mention, uh, our course uh, uh, ready to dispatch. We uh, yesterday we had uh, uh, three seats and we were giving it away for a really small uh, price. And thanks for everyone who purchased that. And then we also did uh, more thinking. And because uh, of the times, uh, we slashed the prices to more than a half, like like sixty percent. Now it's uh, it's three hundred dollars for our ready to dispatch course so if anyone is interested in that and then also we have payment options as well uh because many of you have asked for that and uh i think uh there is a a lot of value we put a lot of effort in this course it's uh, 70 lessons uh and it will teach you how to start your company start from the beginning of dispatching business and all the way uh to booking loads uh, getting owner operators and then we will have support for you and uh, maybe even if you already started maybe it will teach you uh some things that you didn't know 
yeah that, that's right. that's a good value we, we put a lot of effort in that for sure yeah yeah and i think it it will help a lot of people and uh and for the time being it, it's gonna stay like that so thank you everyone for watching asking these great questions uh this video will stay on on the channel if you want to re-watch it later thanks uh emro for being here and not yeah, letting you speak for having me <laughs> <laughs> we didn't let you speak a lot so next That's time we'll fine. do it on your channel i can hold candle i don't mind <laughs> <laughs> well ne next time uh, make sure please uh, do subscribe to his channel ea tracking and then next time we can do a live session on on on, on his channel and one more time thanks for yeah. alex to uh, for being here and being so kind yeah thank you and see you all right see you guys later